Hi, I'm Stephen Feuerstein, and I write practically perfect PLSQL. Greetings and welcome to the PLSQL channel, a series of video trainings in the Oracle PLSQL language. My name is Stephen Feuerstein, and I'm a PLSQL developer just like you. This lesson is part of my series on writing dynamic SQL in Oracle PLSQL, and this topic is advanced topics. So I'm going to cover two topics right now for advanced topics, parsing very long strings and describing columns in your query. So parsing very long strings. Now, as you're familiar from taking the other lessons, execute immediate is the dominant mechanism for executing dynamic SQL statements. So I pass it an update statement, query, etc. You execute it, and you're done. The problem, though, is that at least prior to 11G, you pass to execute immediate a single var car2 string, which has a limit of 32K, 32767 characters. Now, it's unlikely that you're going to run out of room. That's a lot of characters for a SQL statement. But you might be generating SQL based on a table with many columns. You might be loading the contents of a file, for example, dynamically compiling a program. There are a number of scenarios where your statements can exceed 32K. So what's a person to do? Well, basically, if you're on 11G, no problem, because Execute Immediate now supports passing accepting clobs. Prior to 11G, it's time to switch to DBMS SQL. So let's take a look at these two options. First of all, the easy one, let's just take a look at executing a DDL from file program with 11G. So the example I'm, I'm demonstrating here is a fairly nice utility. You might find use for it all by itself. This program takes the directory and the file name you specify, reads the contents of the file using util file, and then executes it as a DDL statement, meaning it doesn't bind in any variables, it doesn't do a fetch into, it simply executes the statement. So for example, I can open up the contents of say the in tab procedure. This procedure demonstrates dynamic SQL method 4. I could use execute DDL from file on this program to compile this procedure, this whole thing. All of this code is one DDL statement. So that's the idea. It's a pretty simple program. I open my file. I get the next line of the file. I add it to my big string. So I'm constructing a really big or arbitrarily large clob of code. And when I'm done constructing my string, I close my file and then I simply say execute immediate the DDL statement. Nice and simple. So again, when you're on 11G, you don't have to worry about long strings anymore. Just construct it or pass it as a clob and you're done. Unfortunately, if you're not yet on 11G, it's a lot more difficult than that. Fortunately, if you're not on 11G, Oracle offers in the DBMS SQL package overloadings of the parse procedure that accept a collection of strings rather than a single string. And in fact, you can pass it either a string of, str of a collection of strings maximum size 255 or a collection of strings maximum size 32767. This would be the preferred array to use for this scenario if you're on Oracle 10G and higher. Let's take a look at the prior to 11G version of exec DDL from file. Hmm, lots more complicated. So check out all this code here, partly because I've added some error management, but partly because that's the difference between using execute immediate and executing DBMS SQL. So let's take a look at the steps. Pass in my directory and file. And yes, I'm going to read the contents of my file, so let's just not worry about any of that code. But what I'm going to do is open a cursor, declare a collection to grab all the lines in the file. So that's what util file populates right here. And once I've read my file, I can then use DBMS SQL to parse my statements. Now, this version of exec DDL from file is actually more sophisticated than this one in that it'll recognize when you've got multiple statements, it'll search for a line that contains nothing but a forward slash. And then it says, okay, I need to execute that statement. So inside a loop, 
well, I still have lines in my array. I'm going to construct a begin end range of them. <clears throat> a begin end range of lines. So basically, I look for the next end statement. And that calculates, that gives me the variation of my rows that I need to process from start to end. In the simplest case, I'm going to do everything, everything from the first to the last. So the simplest approach of using my parse program with an overloading, whoops, an overloading of uh, lines, of arrays, is I would go from first to last. And that would do everything. But in this case, since I'm being a little bit fancier, I'll calculate my start and my end range. I'll say parse the statement that is comprised by going into the L lines array and from this value to this value, from this index value to that index value, construct one big string and execute it. So then I execute it. After that, if I'd like, I can call the last SQL function code, which is another function in the DBMS SQL package, and that will tell me the type of statement that was executed. So that's very handy, and that's something that you also don't get with execute immediate. And after that, I close my cursor. So this is the key advancement in DBMS SQL prior to 11G, the only way to process arbitrarily large strings for dynamic SQL processing is to use DBMS SQL.parse, declare your array structure as one of the predefined array structures in DBMS SQL, and there are strings, numbers, dates, etc. And then I simply pass it to the parse program. So as I said before, lots more complicated than 11G, in which I can simply do an execute immediate, but keep in mind that this version does support multiple statements, which would not be the case for this one. I'd have to actually write a program to iterate through my clob, searching for the forward slashes, pull out that chunk of my clob, and execute it separately. So it still would be a good bit more complicated to do it in 11G. Next, describe columns in a query. So DBMS SQL offers the ability to ask a cursor to describe the columns defined in that cursor. So in other words, I parse my cursor, I parse my query, and I want to know, does it have 15 columns, 25 columns, etc. DBMS.SQL, DBMSSQL.DescribeColumns will do that for you. And it can help you avoid really complicated parsing of your statement and analysis of that statement. And mainly you're going to use DBMSSQL.DescribeColumns with method for dynamic SQL in which I don't know the number of elements I'm selecting in my select list. I don't know their types. We'll let describe columns do the heavy lifting for you. Let's take a look. I've created a separate package, describe columns package, just to help me exercise this utility. So I've got a program that says get me the columns for this query. And notice it returns a collection of records in the DBMS SQL package. So let's take a look at that package. Yes, yes. So here's my collection of records. Describe tab is a table of describe record. Describe record contains the information about the various columns, or the, the information about each column that I've fetched out. So the type, the name, the length of the name, the schema name, etc., etc., etc. And there's also a describe tab 2 and rec 2, which offers a bit more information. And now there's, in 11G, a describe rec 3. But they'll all be used in basically the same way with overloadings, different overloadings of describe columns. So I'm going to get the columns for a query, get the columns for a cursor. If I already have a DBMS SQL cursor, just pass in the cursor and return the array of records. And then I've got some test programs show me the columns for a given list for a given query, for a given cursor. And all that it does, all that these programs really need to do, is call describe columns, pass the cursor, pass the number of elements, or retrieve back, I'm sorry, retrieve back the number of elements or columns in the list and the array structure. This program, by the way, in DBMS SQL is so old that when describe columns was first implemented, there was no way to find out how many elements were in this collection which of course we can do with the count method. So back then, this is back in Oracle 7.1 or 2, 
there were no methods on collections and Oracle had to actually pass back the number of elements in the list. Wow, that's an old program. So, passing the cursor, describe the columns, get back the array. And I could do the same thing for the dynamic query, so I pass in the query. I declare a cursor. I parse my query for that cursor, and then I get the columns for that cursor. And finally, my show programs simply get the columns for a query or a cursor, and then show the columns. I'll compile my package. No errors. Let's try it out. So let's run this version right here. I pass in a dynamic select statement. It parses it. Then I pass the cursor to for cursor. It, get back, it gets back the collection. Show the elements in the collection. I run this code. And it shows me the following. My first column is named last name. Its type is 1. Second is salary. Its type is 2. Third is hire date. Its type is 12. Mm. Well, okay, first of all, the good news. The good news is that I didn't have to know the structure of my select statement in advance. It could be anything. And I can call describe columns afterwards to get the column information. And this is exactly the kind of detail that I can use when I'm doing dynamic SQL method 4. So I can iterate through the contents of this collection and then do the define columns and column value program calls. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure you watch the Method for Dynamic SQL presentation. But describe columns really fits nicely in terms of helping you do Dynamic SQL Method 4 more easily. That's the good part. The bad part is the data types are passed back as numbers. Wow, so what are you supposed to do with that? Well, turns out there's a package called DBMS types that contains the correlation between the number and the type, or at least it gives a name to the type. So 1 is a var car, 9 is a var car 2, 2 is a number, etc., etc. So here's your collection that contains some of this information. I'm sorry, here's your package that contains this information. Unfortunately, it's rather strange and, and not very reliable information as far as I'm concerned. For example, last name is not a var car. Last name is a var car 2 but it's showing you the type is equal to 1 for any of those. In fact, I've never seen a type number 9 come up. It always shows up as 1. So there are some strangenesses in the way that Oracle is reporting the type numbers. And essentially, if you're going to use this Describe Columns program, you're going to use it in your, in your application, you're going to want to analyze specifically what error codes are passed back, create your own constants, avoid hard coding those numbers, and make sure you get it right because describe DBMS types is probably not going to be reliable enough for you. But the bottom line is that Oracle does give you this capability. DBMS SQL does allow you to get the individual columns from the cursor that you just parsed. And that's a very valuable feature. To conclude, Execute Immediate makes it really easy to do the vast majority of dynamic SQL operations. In most cases, you're never going to need anything but Execute Immediate. When you do, when you have some of those outlying functionalities or requirements, for example, method for dynamic SQL, very large strings, I don't know the columns in my list, let me describe the columns, then DBMS SQL comes to the rescue and really makes it possible to do just about anything you need to do.